Hakia Prison has a good-looking new customer. Former male stripper slash DJ Siobhan Arasu Dahl used to work for Dex in Perth nightclubs. He's now going to work the dicks inside Hakia after pleading guilty to a range of drugs charges. And we're off. Shiv was one of five men who were arrested after WA cops raided a storage yard in Maylands and found a heap of meth. That in itself isn't that surprising because Maylands. <sighs> but there was also 2.3 kilos of cocaine, 1.5 kilos of MDMA and 4.5 kilos of cannabis. That's a lot. Even for Maylands. Didn't stop there. Detectives kept pulling the string. I've been watching The Wire recently. I don't understand a word of it. After working the case a bit harder, they found a Scarface amount of coke, $6 million worth this time, plus a huge haul of cash. Shiv was ultimately charged with nine counts of possession with intent to sell or supply and two counts of money or property laundering. His lawyers hinted he would fight the charges, claiming he was a reluctant participant who was threatened by other members of the gang. They made me! That legal strategy didn't have legs because court documents show he pleaded guilty to all charges save for one count of laundering. Looking at a long time behind bars. And he'll have plenty to think about when he's in there. The DPP wants to seize property owned by him under asset confiscation laws. We're going to have to sell the house to someone else. You hate me, don't you? No, 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 I don't hate you. Which means when he does get out of jail a very long time from now, he won't have anywhere to live. He'll need to get a job. Might not need to be full-time, though. Medibank Private is trialling a four-day work week. 250 staff will be part of a program called The Gift, based on a 180-100 principle. 100% pay for 80% of the hours whilst retaining 100% productivity. What does that look like? Like this. I have X on it, 86 and a quarter, six months ago. Today it is trading at 36. Staff are being told to scrap low value work. But that's all we do on Up Late. We don't know what constitutes low value work at a health insurer, but it might end up being the processing of your medical claim, so don't hold your breath for the rebate. Mm, last time around the water cooler. Yeah, if only that had been the case at the Federal Department of Infrastructure. A group of junior public servants there have been busted creating a hotties list, which rates the attractiveness of female co-workers. This is not how I wanted to wake up. If that scenario sounds familiar, it's because that's exactly how Facebook started. The first thing we're going to need is a lot of pictures. Department bosses told a Senate estimates hearing they never actually found the list, but are pretty sure it did exist. And it was compiled despite the fact the people who wrote it had gone through the Australian Public Service value system and also sat through a Respect at Work tutorial. Thanks, sugar boobs. Interestingly, the department's solution was not to ensure the men they employed weren't creeps, they were just going to employ fewer men. Talk about blokes behaving badly. Former presidents are just as likely to break the rules as junior bureaucrats. You know you're a fake. You know that. We know this because Anthony Pratt told us so. Anthony is an unusual Australian billionaire because his money comes not from the resources industry but manufacturing, specifically the manufacturing of cardboard boxes. You built a fort, didn't you? <laughs> Lots of cardboard boxes. Kind of. He does that in America, which is why he sought to develop an unusual relationship with Donald Trump. Leaked recordings reveal Anthony spent megabucks currying favour with the owner of the world's most famous mugshot. They got close enough at one stage for Trump to allegedly tell Anthony secrets about America's nuclear submarines. This was sensitive information and that people were concerned about it when they heard that Trump had spoken about it. Secrets which Anthony subsequently told 45 other people. <laughs> Can you keep a secret? No. Oh, well, who cares? The recordings have Pratt bad-mouthing Trump behind his back, which is probably why the Donald described him as a red-headed weirdo from Australia. A red-headed weirdo, eh? I'm going to move on before you can make another <laughs> joke. From international diplomatic snafus to local politics, it was third time's a charm for aspiring West Australian politician Peter Hudson. Pete ran as a Liberal candidate in the federal seat of Brand last year, and he lost. He then ran as Liberal candidate in the state seat of Rockingham this year. And he lost. After having to apologise. Told a constituent to ask Labor's Magenta Marshall whether she'd resign from Parliament if she got knocked up. Classy guy. Classy guy. Peter then turned to the third and final rung of government, ran for Rocco City Council and got in. His political aspirations remain alive. Unlike poor old Stephen Wells, who failed in his bid to get on the Bustleton Shire Council. Regular up late viewers, if such an animal exists, might recall Steve O made his debut on this show last month. Steve is partial to wearing a rubber fishtail and, as a self confessed merfolk representative, staunchly defends his wife's right to sport a mermaid outfit in public swimming pools. And they don't understand the products, they don't understand the whole movement. 
Voters rejected him in a win for both democracy and globo homo retardation, which is the benevolent social force Steve had been trying to thwart from elected office. What's he going to do now? We answered that last time. Losing might be a blessing in disguise for him, though. Those late-night council sittings would mean less time standing at the end of Bustard and Jetty jerking off to Ariel while wearing a Ku Klux Klan shirt. Oh, gross. Nicholas Cage, you've been warned. I'm Ben Harvey. For more up late, click the subscribe button below.